when we started, we are all Satoshi. What was the model? The model was 30% will go to the proof of reserve for the liquidity and sustainability of we are also Satoshi token, was token, right? So that was the model from the beginning. And that model actually brought sustainability and it basically secured the liquidity of the whole community. Yes, it did. That's why we are talking and that's why there are 591 people on this call because it secures liquidity and ensures sustainability. There was a break. The sustainability was damaged because of reasons not associated with we are all Satoshi. What do you think? Uh, I, I was not aware about the projects that you all are taking part in. Do you think uh, I, I don't want to make money? Why, why, did I, why did I not ever jump on any other thing except for we are all Satoshi? <laughs> Surprise, uh, surprisingly, I, I, I did not. I never ever jumped on or promoted or, uh, you know, in any kind I supported or I even advocated any other thing in this market. See, I'm a man of integrity and I really work with ethics and morals. So, I mean, it's, it's totally all right to question me, right? It's, it's all right to question me. But was there a question on the control of proof of reserve when we started, I proposed this idea from my side. This is my idea. And this idea of board of trustees is a very complicated Oh no, uh, you will get a chance to present. Okay, let me disable. Okay, now you can do it, I'm sorry. Okay, so the idea of having a board of trustee and turning this project into affiliate marketing 2.0 was mine. Nobody asked me for it. So it's, it's being backfired at me right now that where are the board of trustees? Yes, we proposed that these many people will be the board of trustees. And there is a process. And I would like to go ahead and bring and you know, explain the process on how these things work. We have done, I have done several e on proof of reserve. Do you really think, is it easy? Uh, can we throw Joe Smith out? <laughs> Thank you. So do you really think that proof of reserve works easily? or how this model functions. No, right? Uh, I think lucky you need to give them a break. 
No, no, no. Just, just let them. Okay, okay. No problem. Just hold on. Hold on, hold on. That's okay. Okay. Leave it. Leave it. So, my proposal was a really complicated solution. It's not, uh, you know, one day or five days job. I'll take you all through the process if, if it is required to know. Uh, well, I believe if you have read the e sign on proof of reserve, you already understand a little bit on how proof of reserves work because it is a model uh, that, that is adopted by various exchanges. How many, of, how many people know how proof of reserve actually works legally <coughs> as a system? I, I just want to know. Can you put your hands up? If you, if you understand how proof of reserve actually works and how it is created and how it is managed and how it is legally structured and what is the uh, model of the ownership or the custodianship. These many people. Okay. Let me unmute one, one person and hear. Let's hear from Brent. Brent. Can you explain? Actually, no, I am not able to explain. I was actually uh, raising my hand for something else. So I'm going to defer oh. over to someone. I am not as familiar with it sufficiently to explain yeah. it in an Paul, adequate manner. Paul is a banker. Let's hear from Paul. Testing, one, two, three. Yes. Yes. Hey, Proof Paul. of reserve is a way to determine that the funds to back up the equity that is there for the liquidity to provide for the functionality of what is required is there. It is a way to put the amount of money that backs up as the underlying asset of the entire platform or the entire composite of whatever is being done. And that proof of reserve is hold, held in a vault and it's locked, almost like a certificate of deposit at your bank. When you have money in the bank, in your savings account, you wanna buy a certificate of deposit, they will block the funds on your account and then they will issue you a, a certificate of deposit. Proof of reserve is a methodology that guarantees the reserve currency or the reserve assets are held in a place that cannot be moved, which gives security to everybody and trust that they will be able to survive. Right, right. So what do Thank you think, uh, Paul, how the proof of reserve uh, is created? Is it uh, kept with uh, a custodian or not? Let me unmute you. Where is Paul? May I have dropped hey, off? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, it is kept with a custodian in many cases, uh -huh. so and as it's a third party holding that proof of reserve, and uh -huh. it also has. Uh, audit privileges uh, that it's audited mm -hmm. on a regular basis as well. Mm -hmm. So there are many different uh, uh -huh. ways to do that. I'm really excited that we have proof of reserve with We Are All Satoshi. So what do you think, Paul? The proof of reserve that is held let me, let me have with a custodian... Okay. 
that is held uh, with a custodian, right? And that is licensed custodian. So making amendments in a financial structure, how easy it is? Very difficult. Very difficult. It has to be so, structured and put in place. Uh -huh. So, so do you think yeah, it needs, needs an order? An order? Yes. Before, do you think it needs an audit before it is uh, the the custody custodianship or control of the proof of reserve is decentralized or distributed amongst uh, multiple yes member members yes. on behalf of a company? How easy is this process? This is not an easy process because the complete audit has to be done. And when mm -hmm. the audit has, is done, every penny must be accounted for. Mm -hmm. Audit, it's under process. I have submitted all the details with all the wallet addresses because it's blockchain, it's chain link, which is auditing. So it's easy, uh, no you know, extra level of compliance, but audit is a process, right? That is correct. And then when we finish the audit, the second level of verification of our custodian, which is keeping <laughs> our custodian, which is licensed, right? Licensed yes. custodian. Any Tom, Dick and Harry cannot keep the proof of reserve. It has to be either a bank or a licensed custodian. So second yeah, process is. is after audit, there is a second level of verification. And then there will be company formation, which I already have applied. Structure. So there will be a new corporation created. Yes, this is the structure. Which, and then once the company is created, it will go through the KYC, corporate KYC. That's compliance. Compliance. And once we will apply for the KYC, then it takes process and KYC gets approved. Yes. Right? That's correct. And after the after the approval of the KYC, there is custodian custodianship approval. Do you think uh, the custodian custodian's license can be just taken? No. Without without the approval, custodianship no, okay. Of, okay. It has to be approved. Approved. And then after the approval of custodianship, the licensed custodian gets access to the assets. Then we will start the process of KYC the multi-sig. holders and in parallel to the KYCs, we will start creating multi-sig structure, right? That is correct. So what do you think, uh, what do you think, uh, Paul? Can it, can it be done in two, two to three days? No, sir. That is not you're possible. A, you're a banker. Th that's not possible. Yes. So, and because of the structure has to follow the proper um, compliance, everything has to be checked and rechecked 
KYC done on the company, KYC done on every multi-sig holder. KYC must be done from a third party and it must be cleared and yeah. then the approval. Right, right. So please, I just want to request everyone, instead of backfiring me, my idea, please let's focus on the objective where we are going because it's absolutely decentralized right i just want to know what kind of assurity uh, people require right now when we have a totally decentralized product and i will take to take you all through the process of how the products are created today because you know we are part of this process we must know every bits and pieces how i'm doing so i believe you all have right to know what i'm doing in the background so when there is a decentralized uh, product which assurity is required right which assurity is required can can anyone take your nft no no can anyone take your nft no it comes with a owner's address and so okay Let's talk about all the factors. Can you stop your NFT from mining? Can we stop? Can anyone stop NFT from mining? No, it's a machine. It will mine. It will continue to mine. Can anyone take liquidity of BTCC? No. No. Can anyone stop swap? No. Can anyone swap the bridge? No. Paul, can you assure that I've not paid you to answer all these questions? <laughs> <laughs> I assure you have not paid me one dime to answer these questions. And I think it's very important that everyone understand the compliance that must happen in order for this to be correctly done. And I thank you for doing it. And I thank you for sharing this so that everybody can wrap their mind around all the work that's done in the background, all the structure that must be in place that you're working on. This is very good for the community to understand and to know. Day before yesterday, I brought the whole roadmap. What all 20 plus smart contracts I'm deploying one by one, one by one, one by one at speed. And I will take everyone through today the process of creating a decentralized product or launching a blockchain or a token. I will take you all through the process. Today is a learning day of how the structures or the companies work. We will not do the presentation. I will take you all to, through the real process, what it looks inside because I'm doing it. You, you all must know because you all are the part of development. So at the end, we will have questions and I will answer all the questions of which assurity and ownership is required. Because I believe many of you jumped on to 10 different opportunities which were available in the market, right? What do you think? Why did I not jump on 10 different opportunities that were available, that were provided in the market? 
by people who are very close to me? Do I not love making money? Do I not uh, want to be a billionaire? Or whatever. I did not because there was no structure. There was no compliance. Did I ever say, come on call and say 50% off from today, tomorrow? Did I say that? No. Did I say 2% will become 3% or 2% will become 1%? No. So, everyone, the community and myself, we have a common goal. That is to bring BTCC to live, to live, and then move forward with all these things. I'm not denying, but this, this process is really, really complicated. This takes time. And I have started it. So please, my telegram has more than 200 messages of asking me to prove who owns the proof of reserve. I own the keys to the wallet of proof of reserve solely. Nobody else. So understand this process. And there's a banker with us. Uh, Paul, I randomly unmuted Paul because he raised his hand. I did not pay a dime to Paul. <laughs> it's a process. It can't be done, uh, you know, with just... So, let me take you all through uh, the real process or the procedure how new products in the DeFi are brought in the market. I mean, you all should know, right? Because you all have seen Bitcoin and Bitcoin has just a white paper. Right? Bitcoin is just a white paper. After white paper, Bitcoin was launched. There was product. But do you all know what is the procedure of creating a product in the DeFi? Let me take you all through. So, okay. Number one is always white paper. We think that white paper is the ultimate thing. It has everything. No, white paper is just the idea. And it, it also contains the proposed solution to a problem or it contains the proposed <laughs> principles. After the white paper, there is yellow paper. Oh, this is a new thing, right? Yellow paper. What is a yellow paper? Yellow paper is implementation of the idea that was there on white paper. I will, I will demonstrate why Bitcoin is badass. Just after the white paper, the product was released. And I'll show you how BTCC is even bigger badass that is crushing everything and directly jumping onto the product. Let me show you. you but you all must know the process uh, because 
uh, I'm not a knave in this industry. And it's high time for all of you to stop acting like crypto illiterates in the society. Uh, you know, you all are part of creation of this great product. So you all must know what it takes to build a DeFi product. Okay. After the yellow paper, there is third one, which is a green paper. <laughs> oh, this is a new, uh, uh, you know, next new thing, right? <laughs> green paper. Green paper says implementation that we did with the yellow paper, right? And adoption of the solution or the idea. And after the adoption, there is Fourth thing, after green paper, there is MVP in which beta version of product is run. And after the MVP, which is the fifth one, there is product, live net, right? So what do you think? Can I not bring a white paper? I can, it's just written ideas and proposed principles. I can do it in 10 minutes, but do we actually need a white paper right now? Yes, we need a white paper to show people, but this process works when there's a good crowdfunding required to build a project. The project is built <laughs> and that is what ha happened with Solana. Uh, Cardano, uh, Polkadot, do you know their 100% product is not live yet? Really, check it, you'll find it. Their 100% product is not live till now. A chain working on principles, a chain working on the ideas with a roadmap of implementation, with a big crowdfunding of VCs, of invest, private investors. Do we, are we supposed to do that? Do, I, do we need private investors, VCs? No, we are jumping directly to the product. And what does it mean? What does it symbolize that we are jumping straight to the product? Because we need solution. We need an up and running product here. So there will be white paper. There will be product. And we are really, really close. Right? So Okay, uh, let me share. I believe this clarity is enough for everyone to 